Men's Omnium. It's the Eliminator next. We love this. It's called the Devil. Devilishly difficult to master. So the race at the back, they'll just double check the track right now because it's going to be very, very packed field for the men's Omnium. This is how they stack up right now. Hollywood leads ahead of, uh, well, shares the uh, the points lead with uh, Sebastian Moravedri, a man who missed out on uh, the men's Madison in qualification and wants to make amends here in the Omnium. Gavin Hoover in the United States has rode brilliantly, uh, especially in the, the uh, tempo race. He stole it. Uh, Bosch is here, Van den Bosch, so is uh, uh, Will Perrett, uh, Banaschek, Matthias Teutenberg, uh, Imma Mora, and Jan Willem van Schip, who seems to be spending energy without gaining points. He needs some more. He's on 40. On 38 is Matt Walls, Tobias Hansen. This is close, you know. This is going to add a magnifying glass upon this eliminator. Murphy will want points, so will Yuri Harvick on 30. I know he, he always leaves it late. Viviani, who only got one point out of the first discipline, he'll be wounded down there. Some big names here that want to take a step forward. What is Benjamin Domar doing in 19th place? Rhys Britton will probably say the same. He's on 10 points. Campbell Stewart, Zakharov. Very busy four days of racing. Just going past uh, five o'clock in the afternoon here in Glasgow, which, may I say, has been beautifully sunny for our entire stay here. Uh, just wonderful. I had a French colleague once who, at this time of year, came to Scotland for, uh, for a, an Easter holiday for a fortnight. And when he came back, everyone says, uh, where have you been, Guadeloupe? Did you head at town? I said, no, I've been to Scotland. They went, yeah, 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 where have you been? He said, no, I haven't really been to Scotland. <laughs> And it's been glorious, so our, our thanks to the uh, the weather gods um, and indeed uh, to you, good selves, for the fine company that you've kept with us. If you'd like to spurge your thoughts, by the way, it's, uh, we're on Twitter. It's at Carlton Kirby, C-A-R-L-T-O-N-K-I-R-B-Y, or... At Joe Russell, N-B-E. Sounds a little bit braggy, I'm sorry, there was another Joe Russell already on there. Was there? There was, yes. There's a couple of Carlton Kirby's out there as well. I think some of them are in trouble, but uh, yeah, I got there first. Meanwhile, Ollie Wood's in a privileged position at the moment. I, uh, he's worthy for it, though. He's been riding so strong. He has been, and he took a lot of people by surprise in that scratch race. He was very quiet in that race, followed all the right wheels, had an awesome sprint at the end, so fantastic win there. Rode a smart tempo race as well, you know. He let Gavin Hoover go up and go up, go away and get all those points early on. Ended up closing the gap, ended up in a sort of two-up breakaway with Maura Vedri, who's, of course, his closest rival overall. And now they are both tied at the top on points, so this is developing, developing into a fascinating omnium. It certainly is. So, um, the Eliminator, this has a, a great deal of uh, fortune attached to it. Uh, good or ill, Joe, it can catch you out, this one. It can. So we will have all the riders start, um, some up on the fence, some down at the Côte d'Azur. We will have a neutral lap, first of all, and then we will uh, hear the gun go. And then once the gun has gone, we will hear the bell the next time around, and there will be a rider eliminated every other lap. So the action is happening at the back. Not every lap, every other lap a rider will be going. The blue band at the bottom is called the Côte d'Azur. That is not a racing part of the track. So if anybody, uh, you're not allowed to ride on that. So uh, very tempting when you're stuck at the bottom to nip underneath there, but you're not allowed to do that. So um, keep an eye for people stuck down the bottom that you think might be safe but they do get a rush towards the finish line each lap. So always a fascinating race, always a real crowd pleaser as well, and fascinating to watch. Sebastian Moravedri, a man who failed to qualify for the men's Madison. Well, he looks like he saved his power for the Omnium. He's closing down overall on Hollywood. Gavin Hoover, very well placed as well after that tempo race, as we mentioned, the American. And so it is that we're about to get racing with the Eliminator. So, a sprint every other lap, and when we get there, whoever crosses the line last, it's a race at the back for our attention, I guess, whoever crosses the line last will be trimmed off, so slowly but surely the field starts to diminish. And the point is, as well, that there are certain parts of the track which are more advantageous to be on than others. The longest way round, generally speaking, around the blue line, is not too bad. I don't know what's going on here? Is it numbers missing? 
I think it may well be a scrunch number in the uh, in the jersey pocket. That's what that's all about. So that's being uh, uh, just adjusted. You know, can't see a number, mate. And still goes on. <laughs> I don't think it's the wrong number. I think it was just uh, uh, put in slightly, uh, slightly out of shape. There we are. Referee's happy, and indeed so are we. So, should we go racing? It is phase three of the Omnium Joe. Here's event number three of four. Not including that qualification race they had this morning as well. Really busy day on the track for these riders, and finally we're off. Stay safe, everybody, for goodness sake. And, um, you know, we don't, we don't want to rebuild this entire surface because it's been uh, really scuffed and bumped. Let's hope they stay safe. They will have some assembly laps here, and then finally they will uh, fire the gun, and then we will be racing. There it is. It'll be the bell next time. by. Not much chance for you to get yourself back if you happen to be at the back with this sort of pace at the beginning. It's a, a frenzied start. Worst place to be is uh, is down at the bottom, bizarrely. Uh, it may seem that they're much further ahead than some of those trailing, but have a higher position above the blue line. But they've got rush room. And the Colombian rider here is in trouble, number 12. As you can see, he's looking around. This is a Arango. Where can he go? He tries to get up to the blue line. He's got to race it. Oh, me. Is that, is that having? Oh, my goodness. What a start for this man. That's disaster for Yuri Havik. He can't believe it. That is it. He's had a disaster. Well, if he was going to pick it up in the points, his task is now even more difficult. That was terrible, Joe. Yes, yeah, so he was sitting in 14th place coming into this event, so was not having an ideal Omnium so far. 10th place in the scrap, 17th place in the tempo. So, like you say, a lot of work to do. But, oh, look at the back now. Oh, my life. We're getting some big names who are taking a bow, and I'm afraid Willem van Schip is the next one to go. The low countries going to score very low here, Joe. Yes, yeah, so van Schip was in 10th place coming into this, 17th in the scraps, 5th place in the tempo. Another huge name to come out very early. Good Lord. Well, we said you've got to take care, and I'm afraid uh, Yuri Havik must know must know the dangers, and I think he couldn't quite believe it. He thought he had plenty of space. There was a big tail above the blue line, and I think he thought none of them would get up, and they all did. Colombia, that's been playing with fire, finally does take a bow here. This is Arango, been riding on a warning. And another warning ringing out as well. Behave yourselves out there. The comment says we've got uh, eyes in the back of their heads. Denmark it is that gets the warning. Well, they come again. Look at the back. Who's going to get up? Oh, no, no, no. The crowd. Oh, they're, they're seeing constant. It's Kojima that goes this time by. The crowd are, are seeing some, some very accomplished riders disappearing from the roster in this one, Joe. <laughs> They, they, they know what's at stake, for goodness sake, and at the moment, I'm afraid they're having their chips with that stake. Yeah, currently we've got uh, Matt Walls, our Olympic champion, at the back as well, so not where we're used to seeing him. So a bit of work to do. Where's he going to go now? Canada and Ireland in trouble at the bottom. Ireland Gump. He's going to hear it. He's not going to like it. Oh! Got right. a rider down, down in the back straight. Back straight for Wales. Reese uh, Britain, unfortunately. I think he's the only runner that's come down, though. Race is neutralised in a dangerous position at the moment, so uh, uh, a little bit of respite. But I'm afraid Jack Murphy has uh, already lost his spot in this eliminator, so they'll continue to circulate. And he's back up on his feet, which is uh, good news, and I think should be able to rejoin. No advantage in crashing, and, and then uh, able to get back on board. So Reese Britton powers himself back up. That's nice to see. And quite often you see riders uh, in a situation like this that uh, do ride rather well. And he'll just uh, let the field come underneath him right now, powers up, and uh, will essentially rejoin high above the blue line, a safe place. Here we go. Back and underway, we'll uh, we'll get our restart in just a moment's time. In fact, one more. In fact, no, this time. 
There we are. There's pigeons all over the place now. Uh, time to invest and Ollie Wood out front doing a, a nice job. He's in good company as well, Joe. Matt Wall's well placed. Yeah, two British riders right at the front at the moment. Canada coming round now, keeping themselves safe. Bell this time, that means the rider's going to be eliminated next time around. Can't believe Yuri Habik, with all his experience, got uh, got trimmed off so early. Two Dutch rider representations both gone. Goodness me. So here we go. Kazakhstan. But you know what? Gavin Hoover was in a very dangerous position there, so he's now dived down the track. Kazakhstan eliminated that time, but there was a moment where I was worried about Gavin Hoover. We can just see him at the bottom of the track at the moment. Looks very safe, but that can be a dangerous position when everyone sprints around. Gavin must know that as well. He, he, he needs to work all of the corners here, uh, get himself into a, a fine position. He's in the wrong place at the moment. Oh, he's very lucky. Somebody's dropped in behind him. <laughs> that was almost a gift. And in fact, uh, some fatigue starting to set in that I'll be bound as well. Camel Stewart won't like that. Well, I think that was a that was a, a lucky escape there for uh, for Gavin Hoover. I think he's in a more sensible position right now. The American up over the top pole and now in trouble. Now they, sometimes you get a lockdown here. You just uh, oh, I didn't want to stay though. Gavin Hoover's still staying at the bottom. Gavin, be careful, my friends. Too much ground for others to make up. Poland is the walk this time by. Banaszek goes. Pacing up. You know, those that we haven't mentioned are riding very well. And it's more of Edry out front. Belgium on the bubble. Uh, don't want to stay there. Battling to find some space. Just forcing their way. Wales still in trouble, and uh, Canada with uh, Gilmet, I'm afraid, is uh, in a, an unhappy place potentially. Let's see how it unwinds. Oh, I think it's Gavin. Ah, oh, Gavin. Just uh, wrong side of proceedings there, and another warning. Plenty of these, Joe. And it is uh, Will Perrot. It's a warning. France in a, in a bad place, nowhere to go up there. Going to find themselves at the back if they're uh, they're not careful. France go. Wow, just uh, offering up some oats here. Benjamin Thomas did not like being locked in, but that's part of the game, Joe. Yeah, not having a great day, unfortunately. Benjamin Thomas, 14th in the scratch race, 21st in the tempo race, now at 14th place in this elimination. Big pickup now, and uh, Reese Britton is at the back, and I think he's uh, having been down. He's disengaged at the moment. There's nowhere to go, I don't think, for Reese unless he can power it up. You know what? He's going to save himself here. Canada are the ones in trouble, I believe, at the bottom of the track. Oh, look that way. It's either them or Switzerland. Well, fair play to Reese Britton saving yeah. that. He had a big gap to make up there. Came along round with a lot of speed, and now he's on the front. Fish German is of Switzerland. That does go. It took a long time. That was a uh, that was a photo to decide. Very very close it was. Referee's doing a fantastic job here. Meanwhile, uh, they still race on. Locked down at the bottom is Will Perrett. Suddenly realises he's in trouble. Paces on. More of Vedri out front. But uh, who's going this time? It is Perrett. Just, just a little gesture there from Viviani. We've not mentioned him so far in this race. Uh, he had brilliant start to the week earlier in the San Lorenzo elimination race. Currently in third wheel, the Italian rider. Not having a great omnium so far. But looking good in this event. Well, he needs to be good in this event, and he needs to be exceptional when it comes to the sprint. Gosh, uh, Reese Britton has, has saved himself so many times, he can't do it again, Joe. And no surprise, he did hit the deck earlier. Yeah, he did come down earlier on. He saved himself a couple of times, like you say, but unfortunately, leg just giving up now, eliminated now, and 11th place overall what he will take in this elimination race. And we'll have the points race later, of course. Now, he'll be off for a bit of iodine spray in it before you know it. Um, on those wounds. Plenty of those today. Bell rings. Sprint again next time by. And it's starting to thin out, so there's more options here. So you have to get more dynamic riding because uh, there's a bit more track space to work with. Not so much opportunity to lock riders down. And Germany, that was a warning. Ha! Wow! 
There we are. That was a warning from Germany. Don't box me in, my friend. And Matt Walls, uh, I'm afraid, is out this time by. Yeah, Matt Walls, our Olympic champion. 11th place overall coming into this. Third place in the scratch race. Really strong start, but only 20th, 20th place in the tempo. Now taking 10th for this elimination race. Canada look like they may well be uh, flagging a little bit. Tries to pick up. Everybody else does precisely the same. There's a wall of riders in front of Canada. And I don't think there's anywhere to go, is there? Oh, finally does open up. Oh, hello. Ooh. Oh, Moro Vedri. Wow. Surprise. Big surprise. That is a huge one. It's not happy. This is our joint race leader, of course. <laughs> he's, joint he's looking, with Ollie Woods. He's looking for somebody to blame. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see how he goes. <laughs> this is a great opportunity for Ollie Wood. This is fantastic. Ollie Wood's been riding really well in this race. Just seeing him, he's at the front, just his second win at the moment, just behind Canada. Nice, safe position coming into this elimination. Moro Vedri is circulating the track and he's still muttering. <laughs> I can tell you at the moment. Oh, my goodness. Well, Xiao Matias it is that goes for Portugal. He's uh, usually lively in uh, the points competition as well. Uh, Moro Vedri is still grumbling. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I'm chuckling, but he's got nobody to blame but himself. He found himself in the wrong part of the track, and it's as simple as that. He's trying to find somebody to blame for locking him in, but I don't know, he, he picked this patch, and I'm afraid uh, nothing came up there, apart from cabbages. Here we go. Ooh, Canada. Canada. Rider 11, Matthias Kiemet, Canada. Melly G goes. Now then, it's thinned down, Joe. This is going to start to get a bit feisty. Yeah, wow. we're down to our final six. Ollie Wood's still up there. Viviani, a rider that's been really impressing me in this elimination race. Not had a great start to his Omnium at all, but been keeping himself nicely oh. out of trouble so far. There's a train of riders above Ollie Wood, and they're passing him one after the other and holding him at the bottom, and he cannot get up. Ooh. He cannot get up and out of it. He's still locked in. Nowhere for him to go. It's a danger moment for Ollie. There he is. He's out. Often, if you get trapped under a line like that, Joe, there's no escape. Yeah, it can be very frustrating if you've got the legs to sprint, but just nowhere to sprint into. We can see that tactic happen. You can just see a rider just keep another rider, keep a rival in that box beneath them. So, Ollie Wood eliminated, but sixth place for him and gained some crucial points over Mora Bedri, who he was in joint lead with. He was. Uh, Germany looked like they're flagging a little bit and uh, again, but it's going to be a lockdown. And Japan here tries to get up, uh, tries to find some safety. Can't do so. Clever riding going on here. <laughs> oh, it's this is fascinating. It's Imamura that goes this time by. You see the tactics raining down upon the unfortunate, Joe. Yeah, Imamura of Japan was in ninth place overall coming into this, so that's an excellent result for him. He'll put himself nicely up the standings. Down to our final four now, and it's Viviani who's looking very dangerous to me. He certainly is. Meanwhile, they might be held in by Tobias Hansen. Here we are. Tobias Hansen slows down, holds Viviani in that position. Viviani Ooh. doesn't like it at all. He's trying to battle to find a little bit of space. Gosh, that was feisty. Ooh. Now, did he go down on the blue band? We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Tobias Hansen. <laughs> wow. I don't know whether he's grimacing or giggling. Uh, but there was some real tactics there. Viviani did not like that at all. I thought I'd almost cursed him there, having said he looks so good. But um, looks like it's Hansen eliminated and Viviani is continuing. There we are. So, two remain. And, uh, well, my goodness. Belgium's Van den Bosch is here with, uh, with Viviani. <laughs> I've enjoyed this, Jeff. Into great tactics displayed. And look at that. Even now, there's, they're using their bikes uh, as, uh, as threatening signals about Manuel. Yeah, it's very much got the feel of a match sprint these last couple of laps of this elimination race. Always fascinating to see. Viviani on the front at the moment, just having a little look over his oh. left shoulder. But wow, big move here by Belgium. Fantastic jink down. He's away. Viviani's got his work cut out. He can rush in at the back here. Now, Viviani's getting his spin head on right now. He's just imagining. And indeed delivering, here he comes, Eri Viviani may have been quiet in this Omnium, but he's just gone loud. 40 points to him, nicely done. Very nicely done, Viviani, like you say, not a great start to the Omnium for him, but he is a really classy rider that you can never discount. He rode that elimination race really well, kept himself out of all the trouble, kept himself quiet. 
here he is now, just acknowledging the crowd. Very enjoyable men's elimination race as part of the Omnium. And Ellie Viviani is the winner, which means he vaults right up the, uh, the rankings and will be a big feature of the points race to come, Joe. He will. So, of course, a fantastic bike racer. And the way this Omnium works is we go into this final points race with all the points that the runners have accrued. And then every sprint in the points race, you can add to your tally. So this promises to be a really exciting finale. Looking forward to seeing the final standings at some point once they've been calculated. But promises to be an excellently tactically exciting and fast points race later on this afternoon. And that sound. Mm. Let's have a look at this first. Men's Omnium standings, the elimination race completes. And this is how it looks overall with Hollywood on 106 points, Moro Vedri on 100. He'll be wounded by that. Van den Bosch on 100, Gavin Hoover on 82. Teutenberg, Will Perret, Imamora, Matthias, and uh, uh, Hansen with Eli Viviani rocking into the top 10. But he's got a lot of ground to make up. Needs to find 40 and more points in uh, the points race. Matt Walls on 60 points. Banaschek, Guillemet, Willem van Schip. Yuri Havik, 16th place, sitting behind uh, Jack Murphy. Havik having a disaster here, I'm afraid. And it's not much better for those on your screen right now. Fascinating men's omnium.